Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. I see many are joining in. That's good. Um, welcome praise to the Lord. praise the Lord. Um, you can keep uh, your mics muted until uh, we have the question question and answer section. Um, thank you for joining. This is our first mentoring hour for this semester, and we're so glad that you could join. And I think this is the first mentoring hour for uh, for many of our first year students as well, those who have joined us uh, uh, new this semester. So we want to welcome you. Um, so what we're going to do in this mentoring hour is to take some time to speak about a topic. And we have a uh, one of our faculty will speak on a particular topic. And after that, we will open up for a time of uh, questions. And all our students can ask questions uh, about that topic and uh, and also about any other topic, right? So that's um, that is what we we are going to do right now. So um, why don't we pray and get started? So if there's the just want to request any of our students to pray, and then we will start. Anyone, um, if you can pray. <laughs> Okay, um, Sri Radha, would you like to pray and then we'll get started? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, Pastor. Father God, we thank you for this time, thank you for this day. And when we came here for mentoring our God, we surrender everything, we commit this session into your hand, God. And we came here to learn something new, and you reveal it to us by your Holy Spirit, God and lead us, guide us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sridhar. Okay, uh, today we have uh, with us Mrs. Jean George. She's a faculty here at uh, APC Bible College, and she's also a gifted counselor who teaches a course on Christian counseling and Christian marriage and family here. Uh, she has a Master of Philosophy degree in Psychiatric Social Work from National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences. And she has uh, a lot of experience in uh, teaching and training and doing workshops and counseling and so on. So um, she's going to speak to us, talk to us uh, about on this topic, trauma. So over to Mrs. Uh, Jean George. Go ahead, Jean. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, just checking to see if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, um, and you can actually uh, increase your volume as well. No problem. Is that better? Yes, this is better. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'm not too sure that to. Sorry. Uh, you can see this, right? And I'm just checking because I, I'm not able to, for some reason, not able to see it myself. Okay, um, Jean, if you, the volume is, uh, your voice is a little, you know, it's kind of breaking up. Is there a mic or something that you can use? Okay. Um, or if Sorry, you can hold. Just, just give me a moment. Yeah. Yeah, so just to give a um, um, quick um, understanding of what we're doing here at um, in the mentoring hour for those of you who are joining in. So we take some time to talk on a specific topic. One of our faculty would um, introduce that topic. And then after that, we will have a time of uh, questions. We'll open it up for, for all our students. You can, you know, you can either unmute and ask, or you can put your question in the chat. Uh, or you can just put your hand up, and then you know we'll we'll ask you to uh, you know put forth your question, and uh, and then they they will be answered, right? So this is what we're going to do. Um, yeah. So Jean, if you're ready, we can start. 
I think you just need to unmute. Uh, yeah. Am I audible now? Oh yes, very clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm not sure if I can hear you, uh, Pastor Jigs. Could you just speak? Check. Check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can. can hear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. So. Um, I've chosen the topic f uh, called trauma, this uh, this mentoring hour. And um, with all that's probably happening in and around our country, I thought it was uh, it was an apt topic to really discuss about. And as a church, as a ministry, I think it's important for us to learn about trauma so that we can create safe spaces for people who have experienced trauma and to help them find support and healing. Uh, we do see that most people have experienced some form of trauma, and I'm sure some of us sitting here have also experienced it as well. Uh, as well. And understanding how it affects people can help us as people, as, a, as believers, to really create that space and avoid something called as re-traumatization. So I hope this session makes us aware of some of the signs of trauma and also how we can create that space where people can feel comfortable sharing uh, some of their experiences. So just to quickly uh, look at what trauma is, it is the response to a very distressing or unsettling event that can actually overwhelm um, a person's capacity to really cope. And this can lead to feelings of helplessness or um, a diminished sense of who they are as people, also a reduced ability to really experience um, a full range of emotions and certain experiences of life. So before we look at some of the signs, uh, uh, one or two facts about trauma is that the responses of different individuals can vary. And so trauma is quite unique to the one that is facing it. So not everyone may experience it in the same way or not or even the same event may not be experienced in the same way. So people can experience it differently. So especially when you when you look at, uh, let's say, a natural disaster, you may find that some people experience significant trauma, whereas the uh, others may, may um, kind of jump back pretty easily or, or pretty quickly. Uh, just to look at what are the different types of trauma there are there there may be more classifications but i've just taken that which is important for us to know one is called as acute trauma now acute trauma results from a single incident that is a one time event that can happen to someone maybe like a car accident or a single sexual assault or a natural disaster like an earthquake or a flood so that's what is acute trauma or just a single incident then we have um, what's called a chronic trauma. A chronic trauma is that which results from repeated or ongoing uh, incidents that that can persist for very long periods of time. For example, uh, like domestic violence or uh, abuse that happens over either physical, emotional abuse that also happens. Complex trauma is that which results from the exposure to multiple traumatic events, typically from events that are experienced in childhood. So this is something that could start off in childhood, and it's usually perpetrated by a caregiver, like a family member, uh, where there is a sense of betrayal or, and a loss of trust. And some of these incidents are incest or sexual abuse or chronic neglect or abandonment in families or human trafficking. So these are the categories that we look at, complex trauma. There's also um, the last one is what we called as a secondary or an indirect trauma. So this uh, results from trauma that occurs when one is exposed to or witnesses a disturbing story or an image secondhand. So it's not the person, the, the trauma is not direct to them, but someone who is maybe listening to it or seeing it or actually just being a first, uh, being a witness. So 
for example, it may be hearing stories of trauma or uh, maybe reading certain file notes or even ministering to people who have faced trauma in some way. So these are important for just for us to just understand because uh, it helps us to know um, sometimes the severity of it. So what when we're looking at the impact of trauma, trauma affects us in all uh, aspects of our lives, in our body, in our mind, as well as in our spirit. I'm just going to go through a few maybe pointers, maybe not in detail. When we look at impact on the body, um, trauma can uh, can uh, uh, can manifest physically in various ways. Like it, it can include pain, headaches, issues with uh, digestive systems, with cardiovascular problems. The body stress response becomes overactive. That can lead to long-term health problems. There can be, uh, people may also experience somatic symptoms uh, where psychological distress is expressed as physical symptoms like chronic fatigue or pain that is unexplainable. Uh, and another thing that we do see of the impact of the body is the immune system, that chronic stress and trauma can weaken the immune system, making them more susceptible to different infections or illnesses. Um, the impact of trauma is equal even on the soul, which is on the mind, where trauma can disrupt thoughts, leading to difficulties with memory, with concentration, with decision making. They can have intrusive thoughts. They can have flashbacks, nightmares, which can affect their entire functioning on a day to day basis. Trauma can trigger intense emotional responses like fear, anxiety, anger, sadness, uh, overwhelming, overwhelm, and this can be quite persistent, sometimes leading to um, depression or anxiety or something what we call as the post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they can also be, um, uh, it can alter their, the perception of the world around, making it uh, feel that the world is unsafe or the world is threatening. They can feel a sense of helplessness, mistrust even sometimes they can feel the sense that they that everything is unreal they're really not ex able to experience life in all its reality and that's the impact on the mind impact on the spirit that what we do see is trauma can shake the um, and the individual sense of purpose uh, and meaning in life, it can lead to questions, those existential questions and a struggle to find meaning and a place to belong. Sometimes individuals can also experience a, a, a crisis in their faith where they question their beliefs, where, where they question their connection with God. This can sometimes lead to a sense of spiritual um, emptiness. And uh, trauma has also seen to challenge spiritual beliefs. It sometimes acts as a, these spiritual beliefs are what really acts as a as a catalyst for growth and resilience. And sometimes uh, they find that hard. But on the other hand, we have also seen that trauma can actually help individuals find strength and a renewed sense of purpose through their spiritual journey, even post-trauma. So that you, you see both of this uh, when it comes to uh, the impact on the spirit. Uh, we'll quickly go on to just see what unresolved, unresolved trauma does. Um, that there are certain risks of not addressing trauma, and this can result in some of these. Um, one is the issues in relationships. We do find that um, trauma can impact relationships, and the individual actually may have difficulty trusting others or understanding what is safe or not. That depends on the kind of trauma that they may have experienced, especially in things like violence or in things uh, in uh, acts of abuse. That's when the relationships become difficult. It can lead to substance abuse or addiction. Uh, the, the trauma, uh, people who face trauma can um, turn to substances in order to ease the pain that they may be feeling. They can have work challenges where they have issues with focus, with concentration, um, a feeling of a lack of confidence in the ability to work. There is also emotional issues, as we had spoken about, anger, irritability, anxiety, a high level of tension and arousal. There can also be high-risk behaviors, such as uh, self-harm, 
or eating problems, you know, that are a form of disordered eating, or even risky sexual behavior for those who may be uh, going through trauma. And also we do see it can cause generational trauma where traits are passed down to children and grandchildren uh, if it is not addressed uh, in, the, in the individual itself. Um, then uh, the last uh, slide that I want to quickly bring about is what can we do and how can we bring about healing? So ministering to someone uh, who has experienced trauma uh, definitely requires sensitivity. It requires compassion and even wisdom. So our role uh, to provide spiritual guidance, our role is to provide spiritual guidance and uh, emotional support and a space where they can actually process that pain. So how do we do that? And again, I've just brought about a couple of points. Uh, the first thing is to be able to create a safe and a trusting environment. Um, uh, trust uh, to build a relationship that is based on trust and confidentiality is one of the real most important things to create that space. So making it clear to them that whatever they share will be kept in confidence unless that there is a risk of harm to themselves or others. Sometimes, um, uh, you know, we notice that when people do share about trauma, um, maybe as, as, a, as a way of encouraging other people, we may share out personal stories, which can actually make the person who shared it with you feel quite unsafe. So, um, Building that confidentiality is very important, unless, of course, they say that it can be shared with others. Through, when, you're, when you're creating that safe uh, environment, it's also important to be completely present and offer your complete attention, showing that you're really concerned of them and their stories. So just your compassionate presence can be uh, of significant importance. And a very important thing is to refrain from judging or even offering very simplistic solutions. We must understand that trauma is extremely complex and healing can take a long time and it is not a, a, a really a linear process. It, uh, you know, it, it, can, it can take a lot of time. It, can, it has a lot of layers in it as people try and heal through that. Um, the most important thing that we can offer is to listen actively. Listen more than we can speak. Allow the person to share their story at, the, at their own pace and acknowledge those feelings. Validate them. Express empathy by saying things like, you know, I can't imagine how difficult this has been for you. Or uh, it's understandable that you feel this way after what you've been through. So just helping to listen. How can we provide um, spiritual support? Yes. Continue to offer to pray with them, asking God for healing, comfort, strength, um, you know, uh, coming to that place of, of uh, praying those supernatural prayers where the, where the spirit can completely bring them into that place of, of freedom. Uh, also sharing scriptures, uh, you know, sharing relevant scriptures gently that speak of God's presence in suffering and his ability to bring about that healing and restoration. I would also say, you know, encourage them to lament. You, we will see that in Psalms and Lamentations, the Bible is filled with examples of lament where uh, individuals like David poured out his pain to God, um, where they're able to express their sorrow, their anger, their confusion to God honestly and encourage that because that again becomes an entire source of release. Um, the fourth thing is to avoid cliches, avoid minimizing the pain, you know, statements like everything happens happens for a reason or God will never give you more than you can handle sometimes can can feel very dismissive and unhelpful instead acknowledge the depth of their pain also be careful uh, not to try to explain the reasons for their suffering as this can sometimes do more harm than go good so our, our job is to focus on the love of God, the presence of God, and the, the assurance of healing in the Spirit of God. The next is to be patient and to be persistent. Like I said, trauma recovery needs long-term support. It can take time, so be patient and committed to walking alongside with them and offer that hope and encouragement as, um, as you're supporting them. A very important thing in trauma care is to practice care for yourself. 
Sometimes it's important for us to know our limits. When we minister to someone with trauma, it can be extremely emotionally taxing for us. And so it is uh, important for us to be aware of our own emotional and spiritual health and seek support for ourselves when it is needed. So spending time in prayer and in reflection and and uh, really um, e even even in in the spirit asking god for wisdom strength compassion and also comfort for yourself as you uh, as you stay spiritually grounded through this process encourage a relationship with god um, uh, for the person who's coming to you encourage that they maintain and develop that relationship by prayer reading scripture um, uh, just visualizing scripture for themselves uh, being um, uh, uh, speaking in tongues these these are all supernatural ways of how that healing can come about also encourage honest communication with God where they can express everything that they're going through in prayer lastly it is to encourage um, them to seek professional help in case they do when you recognize that the situation may be uh, may require a professional support um, suggest that they consider speaking to a counselor uh, who can uh, who may specialize in trauma and also if they do require any kind of medical assistance to um, to help with that so ministering to someone who has experienced trauma is a responsibility that requires a, a, a huge blend of, of spiritual guidance, of practical support, of empathy. And by creating that safe space and compassionate environment, by listening, by offering that support, we are helping them in their journey of uh, healing and restoration. I thank you so much. Uh, I'll be open for any kind of questions you may have. Over to you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jean. It was uh, quite an eye-opener <clears throat> about trauma and the, the outcome of it and how we can go about helping people. So, so um, yeah, now uh, we I'll just open it up for a time of questions. Um, like I said earlier, you can either put your hand up so we, um, we can just unmute and ask you to unmute and ask questions, or you can put your questions on the chat as well. So we can take this time to ask questions on this topic for some time, and then we can ask on any other topics as well. Right? So please go ahead. Um, yes, uh, Jeevan, uh, please go ahead. You can ask your question. Um, hello, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, what is your question, uh, Jeevan? Um, yes, my question basically, uh, the whatever we have here uh, just now, uh, it's just happening to me. Like, uh, I've been going through uh severe trauma these days and uh the uh, the recently i hear everything about it is happening to me and i hope i can really get a uh, uh, help with this uh, situation and i don't know how to deal with it and one of the reason i joined this uh bible college uh, this uh, uh is one of the reason that i wanted to get rid of my situation that i'm facing right now Uh, Jean, uh, like I, I don't know if I can tell. Uh, yeah, if I can tell right now, my um, my um, incident, or I can maybe uh, tell you personally. Yeah, what we would like to recommend is. Uh, sorry, Pastor, you want to share something? Uh, let's give. Uh, we can give uh, Jeevan uh, the mobile number to call. And uh, so, Jeevan, you call, and we can do it offline. Yes. So. Um, um, yeah, so um, do you want to give him the just list number? So, one eight hundred. So, Jeevan, can you take this number down? Um, <clears throat> sure. It's one eight hundred. You said one eight. Okay, I'll just put it in the chat. All right, so one eight hundred three. Pastor, I just shared the 
number here. Yeah, so just call that number and then you can ask to speak to a counselor and they will help you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jivan. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question um, here from Rin. Can a person being traumatized get possessed? So this person is undergoing trauma. So does that open up for that person to become possessed? Jean? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rin. I'll, um, uh, I'll, I'll put in a couple of thoughts, and then I think I'd leave it open also to the other pastors. So um, what happens? when a person is undergoing trauma, and especially when if they are presenting symptoms like we spoke about, uh, I think it keeps the person's spirit open to any kind of influences um, of the demonic. Uh, and uh, especially we do see, like I'm, I'm giving an example of, let's say, someone who has faced trauma and um, uh, is involved in high-risk behavior. Maybe it is um, maybe sexual pr promiscuity or any kind of drug use. And so like, what happens is they, they keep their spirits open um, to to the demonic. And there can occur, as a result, um, uh, spiritual uh, spiritual issues that, that come about. Because uh, a person who is undergoing trauma is definitely in a place um, with their minds quite unguarded. And so the the um, the the openness of the of a of a spirit to to come in and to really uh, bring about that possession is quite high, and and that's why uh, especially I think especially among believers uh, who have gone through trauma, one of the first things that um, maybe in our counseling that we do actually we do act we do is to really see the impact of how their relationship with God has been. Because in order to close those doors, they, they would need to come back to a place of a, a, a sense of building, renewing that relationship with God. So in the way that I've seen it, or at least through experience, I, do, I have seen that when people do open up their spirit, their heart uh, to what is evil, there can be also possession. I think I'll just oh, leave, leave it to that and open it to other pastors to comment as well. Yeah. Would anyone else um, like to share or add on uh, any of the pastors um, to Jean's response? Um, Rin, I hope that um, that answer your question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we will move on to another question. Um, so this question is from Sukesh. So he's asking, you know, in which age group does this trauma, you know, is, is this trauma identified? You know, which, which age, age group undergoes trauma? And uh, so probably his question is like, how young or how old? Um, yeah, Jean. So um, uh, like we spoke about, there are different types of trauma. <clears throat> so if if they are more individualized trauma, like for example, uh, uh, sexual assault, sexual abuse at a young age, uh, or th there can be tra traumatic um, experiences that they uh, th that they um, that you can see, but of course the person who is going through trauma or the child who is going through trauma may not be able to label it as trauma, but others who may be witnessing what the behavioral responses or the emotional responses of the child is can see it. So if we're looking at an age group, even for children as young as five and six years, can uh, show symptoms of trauma. Like traumatic uh, responses sometimes could also be high emotional arousal or behavioral difficulties, or even uh, things like nightmares or flashbacks that come about. And we've seen that also in children as young as five to six years of age. And of course, that it just goes up into the age group as well. 
But like I said, it depends on the kind of trauma. Like for a natural disaster, um, it may not really, um, it may impact uh, in some way, but there may not be as too much of evidence of it. I just probably would like to tell you of a case um, of a young child who, uh, I mean, she's a, she's a she's a grown-up lady right now. But in her childhood, when she was three years old, she was part of the World War II, where uh, uh, where there was a lot of war going on. Uh, the trauma that has continued till now is every time she hears thunder. Um, you know, there there is an extreme uh, emotional response, and. Uh, all that she remembers is the sound of uh, of bombs that's actually taken um you know that that the the way that she's experienced that trauma has even continued even up to now when she's beyond 80 so it can trauma can be experienced at all age groups again depending on the type of trauma right thank you jean um i hope that helped uh, sukesh uh we have another question uh, from Moses. So Moses um, says that, okay, he was praying for his friend's mother uh, who had cancer. He was praying for two years continuously, and then she passed away. But she, he felt the presence of God, and he was expecting God to heal. Uh, but then later, she passed away. So Moses, what exactly is your question? If you can um, further... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. my uh, friend's mom had a cancer, and uh, they are Hindus. Uh, so I was uh, praying for them, and uh, no, her mother. Uh, no, I was expecting a miracle, uh, but uh, that did not happen. Uh, but uh, without hope, you know, I had hope she will uh, survive. Uh, but uh, after the, her death, I lost the hope. Uh, so I mean. Uh, with that many things uh, it depressed me uh, so that's what uh, i am asking her question okay so your question is how can one come back how can one bounce back from that experience is that your question yes it's like uh, two question one question is uh, i felt uh, uh, sad about uh, that incident i was expecting it but uh, uh, I mean, uh, that did not happen. And many days uh, I was into that thought. And other thing is that uh, uh, I was expecting to her mother, but that did not happen and uh, they are not saved. Uh, so two things, uh, Pastor. Okay. okay. Uh, Jean, would you like to uh, answer? Uh, like, like being restored from that place of hopelessness and um, yeah. Um. So, uh, I mean, I think that's something that probably um, each, all of us, maybe at some point of us go through. Uh, but uh, but uh, again, I'm not too sure if this is related to trauma, but nevertheless, um, how do we encourage ourselves is, uh, yes, I think just the back to the word of God and really coming back to our, taking your questions to God, taking whatever your um, thoughts and your feelings and your disappointment first and foremost to god and uh, going back to scripture to really settle your heart knowing that god is a god of love god is <clears throat> a god who um, who knows and who is in control and who is uh, with us in each one of our situations maybe not really uh, help to explain at that point of time as to why some things happen, but knowing that uh, God is sovereign, God is control. And so for us, um, what do we need to do is to getting back to God. One is to bring before our hearts to God and as well getting back into the word and encouraging and strengthening our spirits back into um, into knowing and trusting that his will, his his work, his power over us is sovereign. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Man. Thank you, Jean. Uh, thank you, Moses, for that question. Um, we have another question from Juliana. Can trauma happen in the womb? You know, oh, in the okay. womb, yeah. Yeah, so yes, trauma can happen uh, even to uh, a fetus in the womb. Um, and uh, generally, so how, how does that, it, it, can, it can also be caused by, let's say, an accident or a violence or even the stress that a mother experiences. So it can, it can depend on 
um, what kind of trauma. But how it affects the fetus is especially through maternal stress. That is when the mother goes through some kind of a, uh, of a trauma. Like, for example, there are hormones that, that are... Um, that are that are produced and so that kind of interacts with different kind of growth hormones that actually affect the fetal not just um, emotional or mental but even the fetal growth so there are the post traumatic stress disorder can also affect um, the the child so it is true that trauma can affect fetuses thank you um, thank you jean um, Juliana, I hope that helped. Do you have a follow-up question or is that fine? Okay. Okay. Um, um, I just want to ask, um, then how is such kind of a person ministered? How are they helped? Uh, so how, how is such a kind of a person who has experienced trauma in the womb, um, how are they helped? So that's so, uh, Juliana's question, right? So, uh, so Juliana, that's that's uh, a great question. Um, so, what happens is uh, it may not be evident till probably uh, this individual, that is this child who is born and gets on in life. Really, uh, th there may be certain um, symptoms, and usually these would be psychological, mental symptoms like depression or anxiety or uh, intense sense of fear. And that's when you know we need we probably do need to go back to childhood experiences or to uh, you know traumatic experiences that the ch the mother has faced. That is, if they do know about it, and you know bring about that kind of uh, uh, an exploration just for them to understand. But the the uh, helping happens in very very similar ways as we spoke about just uh, dealing with the symptom that may be there so even if if they are ex expressing anxiety or depression we deal with it like how we would deal with depression and anxiety but having the background of what a traumatic experience has been but helping them to come in terms to find that healing uh, through th those situations so the the, the intervention is probably not very different, but maybe the inquiry or the exploration will be a lot more in depth because they were not. It was not direct on the on the fetus. It was it was uh, indirect indirectly through the mother. But then when there are uh, accounts of what the mother has gone through, if that's if that can be looked into, if that can be uh, worked on, bring about healing there. That's the process that we would take on. It may not be as straightforward as working with someone who has uh, faced a, a direct trauma, like like the mother. Right. Thank you. Uh, I hope that helped, uh, Juliana. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so we uh, we have a question here from Daniel. Uh, from um, he's referring to Luke seven thirty eight about Mary Magdalene and. Was she just worshipping Jesus or was she recovering from trauma? And I think Pastor Ashish has answered that. He's given the context for the whole inc incident uh, in the Pharisee's house and uh, intentionally uh, Mary Magdalene being a sinner, uh, but she knew that Jesus was there. She came and um, she brought something of great worth, of value, and worshipped the Lord. So it was a very intentional worship of the Lord. And she also experience repentance and so on so um yeah so I, I think that answers a question uh daniel jean would you like to add something would you have a perspective on this no i think scripture just speaks for itself that it yeah. is worship yeah right right okay okay so uh, another interesting question uh, from pendon uh, does being overprotective to a child, does that lead to trauma for the child? I, I, I suppose it's like when the child grows up and it has been insulated uh, throughout child uh, throughout the childhood, and suddenly being exposed to you know the world. And I I, I assume that's the situation. Um, yeah. So, um, pendant the the uh, symptoms of trauma 
uh, if you look at it, are uh, as we had discussed, uh, are quite uh, engraved and quite deep for a person going through a situation. Uh, in this case, when someone is being overprotective, when a child is being overprotective, over overprotected, they are actually entering into a world where they may really not know how to deal with challenges. So, so it 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 may bring about symptoms of. Uh, again, you know, fear or anxiety or trepidation, all of that, but it does not lead to trauma. Uh, however, let's say an overprotective child probably, uh, when, when we're looking at overprotection, we're also looking at where um, there haven't been skills of resilience that have been built into a child through through different life skills. You know, <clears throat> we all learn life skills when we are put into situations where uh, <clears throat> we need to learn how to manage things. So if a, if a child is overprotected and someone's always taking care of every kind of need for the child, definitely resilience is a, is a lot lesser. They, in, in order to face the world, face the kind of challenges that they may come about, you may need to have some kind of an experience of dealing with that. Now that can um, that uh, in itself could lead to trauma, but being overprotective, being protected cannot lead to trauma. But as a consequence, if they do go through some traumatic experience, that of course, uh, they have very, very poor ability to cope. So that may lead to a trauma certain traumatic symptoms. I hope that I answered that. Okay. Thank you, Jean. Um, and um, I hope uh, that answered. You can put on the chat if uh, that that answer was satisfactory. Okay, we have another question from Rin. Um, what is the best way to avoid trauma? And I guess one more question I have is, is it possible to avoid trauma? And what is the best way to avoid it? Yes, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think it is, uh, it is totally possible to avoid trauma. Um, we may all have faced traumatic experiences at some point of time. But what can we do is how could we keep ourselves protected from keeping ourselves being affected by traumatic experiences? Maybe uh, I think would maybe a, a question to ask. And that is, yes, building ourselves in every area of our lives, whether it's our body, it's our soul, it's our spirit. To um, so I, and, and if we're looking at it, uh, holy, um, especially in the in the soul and in the spirit, is to build ourselves uh, in in these kind of experiences to really understand where our identity comes from. I think a lot of issues when it comes to mental health uh, arises from the fact that we have misplaced identity. Our identity is in something that uh, that when we lose, we kind of break. Uh, all our walls just break down. So uh, for us in our spirit to really uh, be assured of where and who our identity is in. And I, I know all of us as Bible college students absolutely know where our identity needs to be in. So if that's something that we can you know, keep intact by our relationship with God and, and really um, having the word of God just speak to us, that I think is the best, like I say, a protective factor to deal with trauma. Um, another thing also would be a willingness to open up uh, in case of um, of having maybe an initial traumatic experiences. Uh, what we do see, especially in individuals who have been multiple, uh, who have been sexually abused multiple times, they do not open up or they do not um, reveal what they're going through. And as a result, it turns into complex uh, abuse. So that, that's one thing, just to be in a place of uh, being willing to share. I think the third most biggest aware, um, uh, important thing is awareness of learning that these kind of situations can cause trauma. Uh, and that's why you would see, uh, you know, of, of the last 10 years, especially parents teach their children on safe and unsafe touch. Why is it? So that they are aware that they can protect themselves in whatever possible situations that they are in, 
in order to avoid situations like like trauma so so it's these factors that can protect you um from from these from traumatic uh, uh, situations not situations traumatic uh, symptoms that may come about right thank you thank you jean um i hope that helped uh, jen so we cannot avoid tra trauma it is possible but then we can definitely protect ourselves right um and shubham sarki has a question how to cheer up someone going through a traumatic uh, uh, experience uh, or uh, post traumatic experience i think uh, jean shared that in the last slide that was uh, put up um, those eight points um just want to request you to just go over that again uh, avoiding clichés being patient uh, listening actively empathetically um, practicing care for ourselves um encouraging them to seek god and you know praying in the spirit and so on right and also seeking professional help right okay um so any other questions okay being alone does it lead to one experiencing trauma um i think it's from pendan being alone in isolation uh does it lead to a traumatic experience maybe in the in the case of you know the elderly or maybe because of life situation they are in isolation they don't have interaction with others um, other human beings and can this lead to uh, a trauma uh, i mean trauma uh so i'd like to um uh, you know the same thing that i did mention in the previous one is the response of trauma is extremely distressing uh to uh distressing to the individual to a certain event and that actually brings about a whole lot of overwhelming for a person's capacity to cope we we had spoken about that but being alone uh, can independently cause other kind of issues not really trauma not A, a traumatic experience, but it there can be a sense of isolation, sense of withdrawal, um, inability to um, uh, socially interact with people can definitely cause other kind of mental health uh, challenges, not trauma specifically. Right, Jean. Thank you. Um, just one last question. I think we are almost there at the end of this today's session. Um, so I have a question, like. if a person and identifies okay uh, that okay i'm going through i'm having these symptoms of uh, of a traumatic experience um then can that person does that person necessarily have to reach out for help or you know can that person by themselves when they turn to the word of god and prayer and can they walk to wholeness on their own uh, is it possible uh i'm i am sure that is possible um ha, uh, i think the benefit of having someone walk alongside uh, a person with who's undergone a traumatic experience is to sense um support and also have someone to journey with them through that entire uh, healing process or that recovery process the involvement of an individual is mainly uh not really for answers but helps them to observe helps them to reflect helps them to come about with ways that they can support uh and find support and find help for themselves so that's why an individual like a counselor or someone walks through with them not really to give the answers but to walk with them as a support so yes it can absolutely take place on their own but the benefit of having someone a walk alongside is is much greater even as a spiritual support and spiritual encouragement i would think so does it hasten the process hasten the healing when there's someone who is walking alongside like like i did mention uh, um recovery of trauma is not uh, it's not a linear process and and how much time it takes for somebody maybe uh, you know it's questionable but but yes i think walking with someone there is someone who who is there could help could help i i'm not too sure if it hastens it or not i may not be able to accurately answer that question right 
Okay, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, we have one last question, uh, Abhishek Sagar. How to deal with the person who's not willing to share about the incident, but they are they want help. They're willing to take help, but they're not willing to share. Uh, is there any hope in that situation? Um, so uh, a lot of times you may find trauma, uh, people who face trauma may not completely uh, at the first time share, but it's okay. It's just being with them, just sitting with them, helping them know that you are there with them in their journey and giving them the space to know that they can share it in whatever pace that they would like to. And that in itself is good. The fact that they have actually come out for help is, is, is excellent because over time, they will begin to share certain details as they see your the rapport that they've been able to build with you as they've seen the emotional support and connection that they have with you. So it's perfectly OK if they don't share the incident at the first two, three sessions. Just keep going with them at some point of time. Um, you're giving them the space to open it according to their pace and timing. Right, right. Thank you, Jean. Um, and Jeevan, I, I know you've shared this comment, but then we, we would really recommend that you can make use of the information that we shared on counseling or any other counseling uh, counselor. You can reach out, and I hope that helps. OK, that's all time we have for today for this mentoring hour, and we hope that it was useful. Uh, let's pray and get back to our classes, right? Let's pray and close. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the input that we received right now. We thank you for the hope uh, that we have in you. We thank you for all the resources that you have given us and, and put it in, our, in at our disposal, God. We thank you for the weapons, spiritual weapons that you've given us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the work of your spirit. We thank you that you are the balm of Gilead who brings about healing for our souls, God. And we thank you, Lord, you are the God of hope and comfort. And hope and comfort emanates from you. And you impart it to us, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And today, God, we thank you for that. And uh, even as we get back to our classes, we pray that you'll continue to speak to us and equip us and empower us to be all that you want us to be. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, Jean. Thank you, faculty and students. Uh, look forward to our next mentoring hour. Uh, just look out for our email notification and make sure you don't miss that out. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye.